guess kind of framing my theology around the aspect of forgiveness sends to me. And a lot of times I've, where I've received, I guess, pushback from that, where I, when I bring that up is a lot of people, I think, take forgiveness as meaning, as almost like a kind of bit, a bit nihilistic, like nothing matters. Like if you just like let everything go, just any, you know, embedded in forgiveness is like the idea that, you know, you missed the mark somewhere, or transgression. And so it's like, and it's almost weirdly enough, the weightier the judgment, like the more pure or profound the forgiveness kind of just deepens your love or something like that. I, that to me is what, yeah, what kind of reframed my whole theology. It reframed my whole thinking of Jesus Christ being God, asking that question, like, in what way is he God? Like, maybe a lot of people might say the miracles or this or that. And I would just say, I think he's, he was God's forgiveness. Like he's just a person who embodied forgiveness pushed it to its absolute limit where it's just like forgive them lord they don't know what they do right. like we're all all of humanity is at some level childlike and if you can find the childlikeness in all humanity again then you can forgive people and that doesn't welcome to the casual temple this week we welcome jason schweitzer who is the host of the Almond Tree Podcast, which is a space to offer people a wide spectrum of beliefs, interests, opinions, and stories with a goal of presenting an open space for dialogue and understanding. Thank you for coming on the Casual Temple, Jason. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for reaching out. Yeah, thank you. It's good to be here. <laughs> yes, good to have you. Um, we're just going to start sort of at the beginning. Um, generally, I ask folks if they've ever had so uh, either a spiritual experience or uh, something along those lines that shaped who you are today. So we'll kind of start there and see what Yeah, you that's a big question. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. why I heard, you sent me that one when I was thinking about it. I was, there's uh, probably a lot of stuff I could mm. uh, list off of. Um, I mean, I've never been one that's had a lot of, I guess, quote unquote, mystical or spiritual ex- experiences like repeatedly. But there's, you know, significant moments you remember throughout life and everything. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not, I mean, I could name off a lot of probably, I've had stuff that's happened that's just been weird. I've had other stuff that's happened that's been more, I guess, directional, like kind of, uh, like at, you know, I guess like at the crossroads kind of turning hmm. points in life. Mm-hmm. And those seem to be more power, more powerful, but less I guess less interesting or less mystical. Like they could always just be like something small, you know, um, like just the moments in life where I find true change or true turning could just be like as simple as like walking past a tree and you just like notice this tree you haven't seen before. And you're just like, so it's just things yeah. like that will happen. Um, let's see, as far as, uh, well, as far as I guess um, my, what basically I don't I don't know if the question is kind of maybe what brought me back towards Christianity. I grew up Christian um my whole life. I grew up in a charismatic circles. So mm-hmm. that's where you get a lot of the more like mystical stuff. The I grew up in kind of the healing movement type churches and all that. Um and so uh then you know like uh it was in my teenage years, you know, like a lot of people you get bitter at the church because you just kind of see it as judgmental place and all this stuff. And so then I mm-hmm. just kind of uh let that fester, kind of become increasingly resentful. Um then just kind of, you know, went off. It wasn't really didn't think much about any anything theological, philosophical, nothing uh, nothing like that, other than Calvin and Hobbes. I always read Calvin and Hobbes. So that's yeah, that kept me grounded. Yeah. Um, but uh yeah. And then um I Basically, let's see, I don't know how to say this. It was a pain I had in, I think it was related now, this, the, actually this past year I found out, I think it was related to tobacco, but I didn't know that at the time. But I had for like nine years, I had this really awful pain. It was, I think it was my something nerve, it starts with a T, but mm-hmm. it basically just caused this incredible pain on the right side of my face. So I basically kind of, and for, I guess, selfish reasons, kind of came back towards God through that, trying to just seek healing. Um, God healed. Um, you know, you could say it's coincidence through all the things that happened at the time. There were times when I didn't smoke and I still had the pain. And then coming back uh, 
towards uh, just seeking God. And um, my mother gave me a book that was on healing and it had like healing scriptures from the Bible that were spe specifically about healing that you could meditate on. And so I would just read that, walk with my dogs um, every day. Um, eventually the pain got worse and worse and worse when I started, you know, believing against it, of course, and then until it got to a point where I just, I was just broken and uh, uh, the pain was so severe. Like I was contemplating suicide a lot. Um, you know, you think about suicide when you're depressed and stuff, but this was mm -hmm. more in the, in the aspect of just like, I feel like I'm tortured every single night yeah, and I can't escape it. Um, and so it kind of, all of that combined, like nine years of it, seeking doctors, finding no answers, finally got to the point where I was just like, just broken. And I, it, it used to come for hours at a time then go away. But there was one day it just lasted like all day. And I just remember being broken. I was like, God, I don't know where you are. Like, dude, you know, you're just not even here. This, uh, I don't know what to do. Mm. And then I just read this one scripture. It just kind of flipped, flipped open the book. And it was just one scripture um, in Isaiah. And then it was just kind of this breath, just like, like, so like, there you are. And then, it, then I was just like, you know, if I have to have this pain every day, um, you know, as long as you'll just give me little moments like that, I'll be fine. Um, and then slowly after that, it just started to go away and didn't come back. Um, so that was one thing, I guess. I don't know if I'd call that like, it's, I guess, I mean, it was just, the whole thing yeah. was spiritual at the time. Yeah. And so that led me back there. I also had warts on my body that was just like, I got healed of that too. Like, I mean, it was, those oh. were spreading and it. Yeah. I had, I still have like pictures of that where they were, um, spread all over my neck and every time I would shave it would like nick them and then it spread more and it's just Oof. yeah and then so those like like I said so those things I guess were kind of big and profound and maybe turning points I think they were just mm -hmm. kind of got me looking somewhere else but they're mm -hmm. not um a lot of times I, I really sometimes don't even like mentioning them I think maybe mm -hmm. maybe I don't really know why the reason maybe it's because of the church is like grew up in where there's such an emphasis on healing um that it seems overemphasized sometimes, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. not, it's not a light thing. I don't ever want to belittle it, but I think the thing that still stands out to me the most meaningful was I, like I said, through the years of just kind of, I guess, falling into bitterness. Um, I had a neighbor and he, um, he would just, you know, just, I lived way out in the country. I had a house by myself and my dogs. And so I would be at work and he'd just, I found this out through other neighbors that he would come over to my house and just let himself in, drink my booze, do whatever. It was really, really kind of creepy, whatever. But then uh, I was still kind of just like, whatever. He, I mean, I bothered me, but then he ended mm. up stealing. He ended up, uh, well, he came over to my house one time. My dad was there and I, um, my dad had left some tools there. I thought the tool, one of the tools was his. So I went to return it to him and then he took it, went and pawned it found out it was my dad's I wanted to get it back and he like said oh, I don't have it anymore so I, I I took that as a reason to hate him mm. um and I basically was like you know it's okay if you steal from me but if you steal from my dad that's that's unforgivable in my head and I remember just being so so spiteful like just just I remember it made me physically want to vomit like I just could feel something inside and just hated him and I remember thinking like you know, I, I just, I don't even want this man to die on the slight chance that he might have a good afterlife. Like I only want him to die if I know he's going to hell right. and just having that level of hatred for someone just, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Um, and then I would, the thought would follow, like, I know I need to forgive him and I didn't know how. So I just started saying, um, it, it, that moment in my life just felt like, you can either forgive the man or you can just step over the cliff. Mm. You, know, you can go, you can just fall into this blackness. And that's still how I see it in my head, like a weird vision or something, like just walking all the way to the edge of a cliff and just here is path of bitterness and resentment. And it's just a black hole you'll never come out of. And, or you can turn around. And then I just slowly just started saying like, I forgive him. And I still couldn't even look at the guy. Like I would look every time I'd see him, I just want to puke. Right. And then, and now, I mean, now just, like I honestly said, I would I would die and go to hell for the guy. I mean, I just mm. like just through that slow process of just choosing to forgive and love somebody, it's like just 
you know, your enemy ends up becoming one of the closest people to you. So mm -hmm. um, that I think was probably the, maybe one of the most meaningful spiritual experiences or turn, turning points of my life, I think was that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I don't know. Those were big ones. And there's a lot of other little stuff where it's like, you know, I maybe saw something here, the story yeah. with maggots and I don't have to go into where Ooh. there's, yeah, that was, yeah, I mean, I can, but that was, yeah, <laughs> it was gross. But, okay. But that, um, I, think... <laughs> I feel like I want to hear it and I don't want to hear it at the same time. So I probably want to, I probably want to hear it. You can probably explain it to me better than I know how to explain it. I still don't know what the heck was going on. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can go into that if you want, or if you want to sure. stick to the script. To no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're about the maggots. Well, I bought, so, okay. I haven't told this story that often. I told it to few people I and mean, my parents know about it. I bought my house um during the for like when all those foreclosures were happening around the country like I think about it 2000 year 2010 mm -hmm. and so at my house I um I would go like I don't know what it was I would take out the trash and didn't matter if I ate had any meat in there it didn't even matter if like there was trash in the trash can there would I would just open the lid out to the trash can outside and maggots would just be crawling out of it like it would just have hundreds of maggots in it oh. and then by the time the week would end, I mean, I would open it and there'd just be like, I mean, thousands of maggots in there. Wow. And so that was just happening all the time. And I just remember thinking in my head, God, I, I don't know why, like what to do about this. There's like flies and maggots. Um, and I just remember thinking like, I just feel awful for those like garbage men having to deal with this. <laughs> and then, uh, so that just kept happening. I don't even know what ended it. Like, I just remember um, like that that was going on for a while and then I mean I don't even think it was like I don't remember having like spiritual shift or anything um but the whole thing just seems like just weird to me now so I left for work I came home I had two dogs and then the back my so you walk in my front door and then you go through my living room it was all wood floors and then there's a step up to the kitchen all wood floors and then I had a dog door out the back I remember just getting home from work I opened the front door I walk in and I'm walking towards the back door uh, to just go out on my back porch. And uh, I like I get to the kitchen and I notice the ground is white. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And then I look and it's my entire, almost my entire kitchen floor, probably three fourths of it, like literally three fourths of it, at least two thirds of it was just covered in maggots. Oh and God. I remember thinking in my head, I just tried to just like in your head, you're just like, you try to like make sense of it. And I'm like, okay, my dogs must have drugged on a deer or something. Like what the hell's going on? And then I'm like, there's no deer here. Even if there was like, how would they get it through the dog door and back out? Right. And so I just remember just like, just being, I, I hate maggots anyway. I just oh, remember God. being so yeah. grossed out and just kind of defeated. And then I walked back in my living room and in each corner of the living room was like another pool, probably like, probably like two foot by two foot in each corner, just of like, just maggots in the corners of the, room and so I just got out like cleaning supplies was just spraying them down but I think it might have been decks or something and they just die and then I'd sweep them up but then uh never and then after that I never had maggots in my trash can it was hmm. just weird yeah it was weird <laughs> I have no idea that's so it weird was, yeah I have no idea what it was mm -hmm. um it was it still is extremely strange to me I'm just like it doesn't doesn't make sense at all yeah, I'm but the house, the weird thing with the house too, the house when I first bought it was, um, I had two friends, two friends stayed there with me. I think it might have been the first night I stayed there, but I know all three of us had nightmares when we first stayed there. And even when I sold the house after owning it for 10 years, there were two back rooms that I just, I, because it was a four bedroom, two bathroom house, like a big house for me, just out in the country. But those yeah. two back rooms just were I, I would, I hate, there was just an awful feeling in them. Oh, like, even my sisters they? would, yeah, <laughs> my sisters would come over and stay there and they said they did not like those rooms either. Once I tried to sleep in one of the rooms, I was like, I'm going to sleep in here until it just feels better. I think I lasted maybe a week and then I was like, <laughs> screw it. I'm just going to close the door and just leave it. And so, so I don't know what was going on in that house, but the Maggie uh, thing was, that's probably the only, that's the only, I think, maybe not the only, but the, at least the main one I remember of like a spiritual yeah. experience that just seemed to like manifest in the natural, like actually be yeah. physical. I don't, I mean, oh gosh. I, don't, I don't know what maggots mean. 
I don't know either, but like, oh, so what did you use to clean? Okay, I know this is technical, but like, what did you use to clean them again? I think it was probably Windex or something. I don't Windex. know what it had. Windex I don't know. Everything. I just had some spray and I just <laughs> was spraying it on them and then they were dying. And so I just was All sweeping right. them up because, yeah. Oh, cool. Was... <laughs> well, I'm glad they left after that because I don't know if they kept coming back. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, that was the weird part because it was just they weren't ever in my trash again. I don't know. Awesome. Yeah, I don't know what that's what makes me think it had to have been spiritual. Oh, I mean, for I don't sure. even know how to explain explain them being in my house uh, logically. It just doesn't no. really make sense. Yeah. When I'm only gone for you know, maybe eight hours tops or something. Yeah, like yeah. that that many. Oh. Did you notice any sort of, uh, now this, I'm going to ask, you probably already thought about this. Um, but did you notice any, were you having some sort of like spiritual quandary at the time? Like, oh, maybe, oh, I'm cleaning up my, <laughs> my mental no. space or anything. No, nothing like that. Um, no. So the only thing, um, I'll just be, I'll just be honest on here. I don't care. <laughs> but I, um, so the only thing I can think of, and I don't necessarily think it's connected, um, mm. could be, but I used to be just really, you know, I, I would basically say addicted pornography and oh, into right. that. And yeah. so I started, I stopped looking at that um, and really broke free of that. Didn't really even have to desire to. So that's for some reason I associate, I think those two might have been around the same time, mm -hmm. but it would be, it'd be kind of weird if they were connected because I mean, the maggots were in, like, I mean, that was there ever since I moved in the house, almost like it was yeah. there before I, I moved in, right. but like I didn't bring it in with me or something, but mm -hmm. I I'm not sure if that was, uh, mm. if those two were connected, but I mean, I guess that could be something I was trying to clean up my act. Yeah. <laughs> be a better <Maybe>. person. Um, <laughs> oh, do you live in that house still or have you moved on from it? No, no, I miss it really bad. Oh. I moved after my, after my dog died. Mm. Well, I had two dogs. One of them moved across the street to the neighbor's house. She was an old lady. And then, uh, then my other dog passed away and I stuck around for like a year and then I was just like, it's too big a house. It's too lonely. I'm just going to oh. sell it. And then, so I sold it and then the market went through the roof. And so now, <laughs> all right, now I'm, I'm at, well, the past two years, uh, whenever the market started to go through, it was the past year and a half. I've been at my parents. I mm -hmm. just a few months ago bought a motor home. So I've mm -hmm. uh, been waiting to get on the road, but yeah, you know, stuff keeps coming up. I don't know. Oh, cool. That sounds exciting though. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so with, yeah. uh, so on your sort of path, <clears throat> have you had any support or spiritual guidance, um, people along the way that helped you out or books that you enjoyed? Oh, yeah. So let's see people. I remember this question. Basically, <laughs> I think everybody, everybody in my life has just been a blessing. Like even growing up Christian, like I said, you know, uh sometimes you butt heads sometimes you run into i guess judgments and things that like that but then looking back you're just like everybody you think had the best intentions was always looking out for me trying to give me help so uh my parents um there's also um some of my parents friends uh gary and terry the, they're like basically kind of like second parents to me growing up um one of probably the biggest uh i would say spiritual influences and I guess uh, guides would have been my dog. Um, she just, I'm still just blown away by everything you just learned through those creatures. It's mm -hmm. just absolutely amazing. The, the amount of love and dedication and just forgiveness that you just learned from them. It's just, yeah, it, it still blows my mind. So that was probably yeah. the biggest one was my dog. Um, mm -hmm. As far as books go, uh, they get Calvin Hobbes. Oh, that's Bible. right. That's all I that's all I read growing up. <laughs> I didn't think I could I didn't think I had any reading comprehension, so I just wouldn't read. I wouldn't waste my time. Mm -hmm. So every once in a while I would maybe like once every few years I'd read a little bit of the Proverbs or Ecclesiastes or something, just whatever mm -hmm. I was drawn to in the Bible. And I always read Calvin Hobbes growing up. And then uh since I once I made that shift like to try to you know, find healing, after I finished that healing book, I just that's when I realized I could. Re so during that process, I should maybe go back to that. I would walk and read with my dogs and I started reading to mm -hmm. myself out loud. And then I, through that, I 
realized, hey, I can actually remember things. I think I just need that. I don't know if it's walking. It's definitely reading to myself out loud helps. Mm. And so then I started reading the Bible after that, just over and over. Because that book is just it's nuts. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> um, and then after that, the probably the only other author that's really, really, um, I would say influenced me and I've been really drawn to is George MacDonald. Um, he's actually a like he writes a lot of fairy tales. Is his main, what he's kind of known for oh, fantasy cool. and fairy tales stuff. Yeah, I think he influenced. I know he influenced C.S. Lewis. I think he influenced uh, Tolkien a little bit as well. His stuff is really it's rich. It's great. I love. Does he write his own? Because I love fairy tale. Like I, <laughs> when I was a kid, it was yeah. one of the main things. I read them over and over again. Um, oh, I used to check it out. Yeah, now I'm excited because he <laughs> sounds like, like yeah, definitely up my alley. Really <laughs> um, I have friends. So after um, my dog passed away, I just you know you, you deal with just grief slowly I don't know it was like losing my best friend but then so I was still kind of dealing with that but then I had a friend recommend uh George McDonald um to me and I just went to a used bookstore the only one they had was um his book book called Fantasties with like a ph like like phantasms so I guess Mm. a play on that um and it said a fairy romance and so I was like like thinking in my head this is for girls like uh, I probably won't be that into it right. um I bought it and that book just made me cry like almost the whole way through it was all I know uh, how to say was it was just healing it is just um it's basically just about the character just wandering through fairyland and every mm-hmm. chapter is different um and that's my favorite book of his um he's got a book called Lilith that's just that book's a trip I don't know how else to describe it it is just like Fantasties is probably set in Fairyland. Mm-hmm. Lilith is just, I guess you would say, set in the spirit world. And so oh. it's just like a lot of times, like two things can be the same thing in the book. And so it's just, you're reading it. And I remember the first time I read it, probably two thirds of the book, I'm like, I'm not sure what's going on. And then it all just starts to come together. And you're like, oh, that's this. That's also. Awesome. So that book's really profound. I don't know mm-hmm. how to describe it. It's really profound. Um, and he's got a bunch of short stories that are just really, really good. I think The Golden Key is one of my favorite stories of his. It's short. It's easy, really easy to read. Um, and it's just, I think it's, I mean, of course, it's about a lot of things, but it's just a little short fairy tale that's just really, really good. Um, but yeah, he's got so many things. A lot of, some of them I still don't understand, too. I'm just like, they're, they're uh like there's one about a a, a girl, female werewolf. Um, it's called the Gray Wolf. And it's a really cool story. But I, at the end of it too, I'm just like, you're just left with like weird like feelings, I guess. Mm. I'm like, I don't know what to make. I'm not sure how to make sense of this story, what's going on. But it's really mm-hmm. still, it's intriguing. And you're just like, this is, this is a good read. That one's, that one's probably shorter than the Golden Key. And that's really good. Too. Oh, wow. Yeah, very excited to like check those out. Yeah, it's definitely what uh, I like how you described it, even though you were like trying to describe it. It's how I feel like fairy tales are because they hit those like archetypal symbols that you can't really articulate very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but you know it, right? Like in your body, you're like, I know yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's how his books are too. We've, I've had, I mean, I have other friends that are into him now and we've a few times tried to be like, man, this story's so great. We should do a podcast on it and do a mm. commentary. And then as soon as you get into it, you just feel like you're killing it. Right. You're like, why am I so much like, talking. I'm just destroying this? Right. Yeah. And you're like, this did, like you said, it's just the, the way the image is working fairy tales, it just like hits your emotions or something. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really hit your, it doesn't really hit your intellect. And whenever you try to do that, you just dissect it and kill it. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Yeah. So, so I definitely read, um, uh because I because I liked fairy tales so much I I read like critical analysis around it and there's I think it's like brutal Bruno Bettelheim has a book where he kind of like goes into the different themes of the different fairy tales yeah. and it's great but it kind of it does kind of kill it a little bit right? because a lot of fairy tales follow the yeah. same structure and you're like <laughs> yeah that's true but they um uh, but those are helpful too though yeah I mean, what was that one um I've heard it mentioned a few times i've tried to get my friends to read it but they haven't read it yet um mm. it's like a metaphysics of fairyland uh oh. by robert kirk what is that um, oh i don't know that one the secret comment the secret commonwealth of uh elves fawns and fairies 
that one that was that was a really good book too that one's hard, was hard for me to read i had to read it really slow but it's very mm -hmm. very i would say intellectual and uh just super interesting though it's really really interesting but wow. i think it was written in like the 1800s or no it might have been before that i don't really? know really george mcdonald george mcdonald's i think he lived in 1800 but i think robert kirk was might have been before that because i ordered one version and it's like in this old english that's almost like you just i'm like reading it and like you just can't even make sense of it really because it's just mm -hmm. um but so i had to order a different kind or like a different translation Right. So I think it, it might even be the 1600s or something. I can't remember. But Robert Kirk, even the guy who had all these ideas and wrote it, this is a cool story behind him too, where he, I guess, died on a fairy hill and then appeared to his friend later and said, I'm not dead. I'm trapped in fairyland. Oh, no. And that your, yeah, and that your nephew is <laughs> like christening. If you will take the dagger, you'll see me appear. And if you were quick to grab the dagger and throw it over my head, I'll be restored to life. If not, I'll be lost and failing forever. Oh, and uh, and apparently he appeared and the guy didn't grab the dagger or do any of that. And so he just got lost to fairyland. And so, like, oh, shit. That sucked. That's a lot of pressure to put on your friend. I'm sorry. You're like, you got to pay attention. You got to have a dagger ready over the head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Such a cool story though. Like that's perfect. perfect. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, thank you for that. Do you have I a... Do you care if I ask? Do you have a favorite like fairy tale or anything? Um, oh gosh, I have so many. Um, I've been hold on just a moment. My cat okay. is like in the box. <laughs> so oh, <I'm> just... <laughs> <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> um, so try to think of um, what? It, hold on, she's still going. They do. I don't know if you ever. Had, I've had dogs growing up with dogs, and they're amazing. Um, but cats do this thing. At least my cats. They will just paw at the box for I don't know five minutes. <laughs> You're not hitting the sand. Well, I, like what are you doing? <laughs> I, I can't hear anything. So okay, good. Yeah, I'll have to cut that part out, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> so your question, uh, my favorite fairy tale. One of my, I love so many. Um, but when I think about a lot. And it's kind of for weird reasons, but it's called The Armless Maiden. It's from, I, I don't know if it's a Grimm's fairy tale, but it's like in a similar thing. But it's just kind of about <clears throat> a girl who grows up. And it's kind of dark, of course, like these fairy tales get. But it's um, like a, a gal that grows up in a kingdom and her dad is the king and he's like abusing her. And, um, you know, she's trying to like speak up for herself, but the, pe you know, the people around like the king, the, you know, the queen, all the subjects, they're just like, whatever, lady, you're not the king. So whatever. And yeah. at some point, for whatever reason, um, her aunt, you know, they cut her arms off. <laughs> Which is like, you know how these fairy tales get like, yeah. cut your arms are your arms off and somehow you're living in the 16th yeah. century or whatever. Um, but then, you know, she goes uh, on her own adventures. And, you know, what I love about fairy tales is like, yeah, you get in this dark place, right, where everyone's against you. You feel so alone. You have no arms, right? Um, she eventually yeah. gets like silver arms or something, you know, how they uh, gift you with like wonderful yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> gifts uh, in the stories. Uh, but she basically is like, she learns to be, you know, she learns to speak up and she, you know, she learns the power of like, the people around her like finding good people right like it's not you unfortunately you were born in a bad situation right but that it doesn't mean that everybody is horrific <laughs> you can like find yeah. other uh people and communities you can you know grow or be gifted beautiful silver arms you know um yeah. and that, that those, all those things like logically it doesn't make sense right if you tell the story but yeah, yeah. like there's something about um, just sort of the, that imagery and, you know, persecution and, you know, especially for um, young people or even, you know, young women in certain circumstances, you feel like, you don't know, you know, have your own voice, but how important it is to, you know, find that. Um, yeah. So it's just one I always, I always think about probably like once a week for whatever reason, it like pops right. in my head. That's, like, That's such cool. a good story. You know? <laughs> that's really cool did you grow up with that story like you yeah. hear a lot growing up oh, well I cool. had yeah. my grandmother had given us um the these like collections they're really cool um 
like these back-to-back collections of like fairy tales that, you know, my dad's, you know, when they were children, they had, and I would just read them over and over and over and over again. And I can't remember if it was just like, like more extended Grimm's fairy tales or what, but it was just like a whole bunch of them. And they were weird like that. (laughs) That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I like Grimm's fairy tales get dark. Oh my gosh. So weird. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's what I think about a lot. Thank you for asking. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. That's oh. cool. I'm going to remember that. Yeah. And so I know, I you know, I know you mentioned um, one of the podcasts that you did recently was talking about, or kind of recently, it was talking about the Green Knight. Um, so mm. is that something that you find is uh, kind of inspirational for you as well? Yeah, yeah. The, um the movie i haven't read Mm -hmm. all the story i've read a little bit of the story um and sometimes uh gosh the version i have is like written in uh Mm. poetic poetic form and i um it's just hard for me to read i have to really be in the right mindset to to i guess dive into that but the the movie Mm -hmm. is um phenomenal it kind of reminds me a little bit of that book fantasies a little Mm -hmm. bit to some degrees i guess maybe kind of with the overall theme of like like i said the character and fantasies is just kind of wandering through fairyland and um the you know uh gawain and the green knight it seems a little aimless like he's yeah you know he doesn't uh the whole story of the green knight movie i think it just was one of those you know just kind of seeped into my subconscious before i really Mm. realized you know that it was actually influencing me um but it's uh yeah because it just seems kind of like he doesn't really have he's unsure of his identity which is kind of like being headless you know and so yeah. it's, there's this weird thing of like headlessness going on through the whole movie which i thought was um which is like like i said i watched the movie probably like three times and then and then you know after it's in there then you start to think about it more and you're like oh that's what's kind of going on here it's just but yeah the, the movie's phenomenal though it's i don't know why it's I wish it was more popular. It's just, it's so mm. strange. And it's just, yeah. it is like, a, the whole thing's just like a fairy tale. It's yeah, I agree. It's absolutely amazing. I think my favorite scene was when he meets uh, uh, Lady Winifred. That, in that weird, have you, have you seen that? Yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then she's missing her head too. And yeah. he's got to like go into the spring. And, <laughs> and she, but I love that question she asks. He, um, he says, are you real or are you a spirit? And she just Mm-mm. looks at him and she's like, what, what's the difference? That's true. It was just, it was so good. <laughs> That film's great. That film is great. I agree. I think that's probably my favorite part. It definitely gets, it's a little more, what's the word? He kind of is heroic in that part, right? And the other, the rest of it, you're kind of like, mm, what are you yeah. doing there? Well, the, the part <laughs> I'm loving that scene too, it just, man, it just, it struck me to my core because like he is, he's, he becomes heroic in that part, but like yeah. for, she asked him to get the that's head true. and then he says, and then he says, if I get your head, what will you give me in return? And she just looks that's at him true. and she's like, why would you ask me that? <laughs> Why would you ever sure. ask me that? And I was just like, yeah. <laughs> You're sleeping in my house. Like, Come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that was really good. Um, yeah, and that was yeah, a cool that, discussion that's... with your friends. I saw that. So it was pretty cool. Oh, okay. Well, I don't even remember what we said. It's just, <laughs> I don't, I got to a point where I just stopped listening back to my own conversations, my own <laughs> podcasts. Because I'm like, I don't know. Oh gosh. So yeah, like, I... when people are, when people are well, telling me, they're like, hey, listen to this one. I'm like, oh. I don't know what I said. <laughs> like, what did I say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, goodness. Well, um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. So what would you say, you know, because uh, you're still, you're a Christian. So what would you say is like a universal truth about Christianity that you, uh, you think it's important for people to know just in general? Yeah. Yeah. That's the big questions. <laughs> yeah. That's a small <laughs> um, question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say forget this is for me like once I started uh I mentioned this before to other people I know like once I think started basing I guess kind of framing my theology around the aspect of forgiveness things mm-hmm. started to make sense to me um and a lot of times I've where I've received I guess pushback from that where I when I bring that up is a lot of people I think take forgiveness as meaning as almost like a kind of bit a bit nihilistic like nothing matters like if you, mm-hmm. you just like let everything go just any you know well how you know like if somebody or somebody you can't just forgive them and i'm like well embedded in forgiveness is like the idea that you know you missed the mark somewhere Mm. that there is a transgression and so it's like 
And it's almost weirdly like it seems to me the weirdly enough, the weightier the judgment, like the more pure or profound the forgiveness. And then that kind of just deep deep deepens your love or something like that. Um yeah. so I that to me is I think basically what yeah, what kind of reframed my whole theology. It reframed my whole thinking. And I know so I maybe should also say like I, there's a lot of things I think where I would still call myself a Christian, but mm. I know there's a lot of things I think and believe that I I probably believe differently than most Christians do. I'd mm -hmm. probably say there. I'd still affirm a, almost every thing in, that Christians would want me to affirm. Just in the back of my mind, I'm like, I know I believe this probably differently than than they do or want me to. Mm -hmm. And so even the idea of of Jesus Christ being God, asking that question, like, in what way is He God? Like, maybe a lot of people might say the miracles or this or that, and I would just say I think He's He was God's forgiveness. Like, He's just He's mm -hmm. a person who embodied forgiveness pushed it to its absolute limit where it's just like forgive them lord they don't know what they do right like we're all all of humanity is at some level childlike and if you can find the childlikeness in all humanity again then you can forgive people and that doesn't really dismiss um the horrors that right. we do in life but it um it uh it like just renews and restores things mm -hmm. and then and even the i mean there's just all sorts of stuff throughout the scriptures that I think just continue to hint at that. Like even when Christ is raised from the dead, he says, receive the Holy Spirit. And then he breathes on them. And then immediately after that, he says, whoever you forgive, I forgive. And I'm like, it's just, it almost seems like there's a deep connection between the Holy Spirit and forgiveness. Uh, um, and so that's like, that's probably the most profound and powerful force that I can imagine yeah. in, in our reality. Because yes. I really think that does restore and give life back to the dead. Because like I said, when I was following just this bitter, resentful heart, it just destroys relationships. Mm -hmm. And the only way to to give those back is if if I either repent, which is basically just like, I mean, that basically just means turning. I'll turn around and ask their forgiveness or, or you can forgive someone else where they've wronged you. And then that restores relationships and gives life back to both parties. And in my Christian theology now, I would... Basically, I describe myself as a Christian universalist, but it mm -hmm. I just think I just think everything's gonna ultimately be reconciled. And if there is a hell, I can't see it being anything else. I mean, I would believe that I do believe there's a hell, but I'm you know, I mean it's just, you know, people believe it's a physical place. I'm like there's physical, psychological, whatever. I think all the fire is redemptive because I think the fire of love and the fires of hell are just like all one thing. And mm -hmm. it's all it's it's drawing everything back into a oneness into a unity um and i think through that act of repenting and forgiving so when you forgive you turn one way you forgive somebody and then you repent you turn the other way and it's just totally are looking at each other's faces again hmm. and i really think that's how you that's how we see the face of god because it yeah. says that in the scriptures too like you can't that no one will see the face of god and live um but then uh there's other aspects where this is a great story in the bible so it's do you care if I go on a tangent? Oh, yeah. You probably heard it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I I don't know. I just I love this part. So there's uh Jacob and Esau, they're brothers in the old testament. And then, you know, they Jacob does all this bad stuff to Esau. Well, I it's debatable whether it's bad, but he steals his birthright, steals his inheritance, and so Esau wants to kill him. So Jacob runs away. Then he's like years later, he's coming back to his the land of his father, and he hears Esau, his brother, is gonna come and meet him with a big army. And so that's when he has that dream. He he dreams at the night, like by this river, and he's wrestling. It says he's wrestling with a, a man. I'm pretty sure it says a man. But then mm. it's kind of weird because I think it says after that it's an angel. And so you're like, is this man or an angel? But he's basically in a dream wrestling with this man. Mm -hmm. And he uh, and that's when he gets the name Israel. The angel changes his name from Jacob to Israel, which means I think one who wrestles with God. And he asks the angel. He says, "Well, tell me your name." And and the angel says, "Well, why would you ask about my name?" And then he says, I think he wakes up and he says, I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. And it says something like you've wrestled with God and man and your life is preserved. So then after that, he goes to meet his brother and then his brother comes to him and just forgives him. And he just greets Jacob and Esau comes and greets him. And it says he runs to him and they fall on each other's necks and they're weeping. 
And Jacob says to his brother, I've seen your face like I've seen God's face. So I really think through that act of repenting and forgiving and um, restoring those relationships, when we all come back together and find that unity again and see each other face to face, and we're looking at each other face to face that that's the same as looking like that's like finally seeing the face of God as the image of God is in man. And so I don't know how you can actually see God without that. If God's image is in every person, right. you have to find there. Oh. I don't know. So that's kind of where my theology is. So, but that I don't, I, so that's, that's why I think everything will be reconciled because I don't think there can be, I don't think God can ultimately be one or you can actually see God's face without reconciling every man to every man, which is an excruciating process. Like right. It's not fun. It's not fun to forgive. <laughs> nope. Or, yeah. It's, it's not fun to, 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 when you really, really hurt somebody, it's not really fun to, to just deal with that either. It's just mm -hmm. easier to run away. Yeah. yeah so. Oh, it's beautiful though. I mean, yeah. It making me think about, because even like when you, you first started talking, uh, describing it, you know, you would say, oh, you know, forgiveness. And then somebody, <laughs> whoever you're talking with was, but, you know, like, what about, <laughs> and you're like, right there. <laughs> it's yeah. pretty hard, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It is hard. Yeah. Cause I mean, even, so here's like, I'll just, I, I mean, I run these thought processes in my head, like even thinking about like Hitler or something, it's like, what right. would it, what would that take? Like if that, so you would imagine to reason if he's, you know, done all those horrible things to people, it's like, if he is resisting any sort of reconciliation with the people he's wrong, it's like, to me, that would be the torments of hell. Yeah. Like you're resisting. God is wanting you to be reconciled to the people you've hurt. And to resist that is just going to continually just torment the person. But then it's like, even if you give a person like Hitler full awareness of everything he's done and how he's hurt people, it's like, mm -hmm. that is, that would just be absolutely excruciating. Yeah. Um, and then telling, then it's hard for the other people that he hurt. Like if you're a person and say he murdered your whole family like and then how do you forgive somebody like that uh and if they're truly truly have a full awareness and come to the end of themselves and are actually seeking your true forgiveness it's like you if that relationship could be restored that's what i mean i think it would just deepen the love mm -hmm. um and and through that like just love would continue to grow. And I think that's one of the fundamental things within Christianity. I just don't know that it's ever really, I don't know that it's talked about a, a lot, but because there's another verse that says, you know, like, you know, well, it says Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I'm chief. And it's like, if you actually take that seriously and you're the chief of all sinners, then who won't you forgive? And it's like, you could, I mean, I could paint it and I could paint a scenario where, I mean, if I, if I grew up, uh, like, in, in Hitler's household, if I was born in the same house, had the mm -hmm. same circumstances, I would be Hitler. Like, and then it's like, like I could, you know, it's yeah. Um, and it's, but it's not dismissible. It's like everything, everything that happened, you know, that was wrong. So that's what I mean. It's just the greater. I don't know, uh, but that process of just, I guess, what I mean, running those things in my head, those weird, you know, thought experiments mm -hmm. or whatever. I'm just like that. I think would just be excruciating. Uh, process of like reconciliation between mm -hmm. parties on both parts which would yeah. feel like help though the, the easiest way to describe it i've used this example before when i was a kid so i have three sisters i don't have any brothers but sometimes we'd fight and sometimes my mom would make us hug and just <laughs> hug and hug and hug and you just have to sit there and hug the person you hate and it's just like ah oh, why do i have to like love this person this sucks <laughs> and so oh, it's excruciating like mm -hmm. it was excruciating as a child but i can only imagine that on like every like existential <sighs> level just like <laughs> yeah right so yeah and it's like your sister right i mean trust me like siblings can really push your buttons for you know <laughs> whatever they can do they're magical like that uh but yeah like extending <laughs> yeah, yeah. that beyond your family you know you're like oh god <laughs> yeah yeah so hard but it's weird. I mean, it's weird how much it grows. Like I said with my neighbor mm. earlier, the yeah. the amount of of hatred I had for him just the that just weirdly transforms into this love I I have for mm -hmm. him now. That where I literally would I would take his place if I thought there was 
you know, place he was going to be tormented, like mm. hell or something. Like I would just be like, oh, I'll take his place. I don't care. Like he, like I truly, truly love the guy. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's weird how that happens. I mean, yeah, yeah, but it's you know, it's not always a fun process. But I don't know. Do you have any siblings? You said um, you had some. Yes, brothers, I sisters. Have a sister. Oh, I have well, one, two, three, three, three other siblings, two sisters, and a brother. Um, I'm the oldest, so <laughs> like. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, the always babysitter is kind of how I. Was. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that sounds tough. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's you're the, well, you're the I'm not having. Yeah, exactly. I'm not having kids though because I was like, I already babysat all the children. I don't need to have my own. <laughs> <laughs> You've already done that. Yeah, I already did it. Not not into it. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, yeah, those beautiful explanations. I think you kind of rounded it back to sort of, uh, was it Esau wrestling God? Or no, sorry, yeah. uh, Jacob wrestling God. And then sort yeah. of like you wrestling your neighbor, essentially, right? Like wrestling yeah. to love him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, very cool. And wrestling to see to see him as a person again. Yeah. Just hate somebody. Yeah. And to see it's the hard. image of God in him. And it's, yeah. Yeah. It was very hard. Which actually kind of relates to some questions I want to ask you, but we can make point for that tomorrow. So. <laughs> um, yeah, however you want to do it. It's, it's All fine. right. I mean, it has to do with Metatron, but we'll just we'll just. Oh build yeah, suspense, so. yeah. We'll talk about Metatron tomorrow. I, right. I love I love Metatron. <laughs> right. Um, I can't. Uh, can you tell me why did you even want to start the Almond Tree podcast? Like, what? Why? Um. Yeah. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Um, um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know exactly. Uh, mm. Well, there's different reasons why I call it almond tree. When I, when my dog died, like right after that, I was on, skip, I went on an extended fast and then I kept mm. seeing like, I, I guess I would call them visions now. They weren't really like visions, but it was just mm. synchronicities or something like just yeah. in my imagination. I just kept thinking about the almond tree, the almond tree. And then I'd uh, like, I turn on the TV and there'd be like, a sermon or something and the pastor would be talking about an almond tree and that was just weird so that kept happening and so it just kind of weirdly became this weird symbol and then so I just kind of started using it just here and there because I didn't even know what it was um mm. or what all it applies to um so when I started the podcast I was just like well I'll call it the almond tree podcast the reason I started I think the first one I did was uh there was a friend of mine and I haven't actually haven't talked to him in few years now so mm -hmm. we weren't like that close but he went uh where was it I think, I think it was Jordan the country of Jordan um he went there um I think he's I mean he lives there now but then he had come back after a year and so I was just gonna I was like well I'll just hear his listening to his story and then I had my phone there and I was like I just re record this so I can you know and then so we recorded him talking and so then I just thought well I should I could just use this to just get people's stories, a space to let people talk, share their ideas. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm always interested in hearing people's stories and where they come from and discussing like ideas and theology. And so it's just kind of weirdly, I it never really had a, a goal and it kind of transformed over time. At first it was a lot more, I guess you'd say Christian because a lot of people around me that I knew, like you said, you're reaching out before we started this, you know, you mentioned you're reaching out to people you know. Mm -hmm. and so it's just different people from, I guess, different churches uh, around where I was. I was at the time, I think I was in a, just a Bible study. It was kind of like a men's group that a church had started that I was attending. So like some people from there. Um, and then over time, it just, you know, uh, then it became, you know, me and a lot of it was me and my friends, Mitch and Craig were just, they would just call and ask me these crazy, crazy questions of just like, I, and my Mitch described it best. He just said, you know, we get on these conversations and I just fall into an existential tailspin <laughs> is what he said. And I was like, that's basically what it feels like. Oh man. Like all my, all my foundational beliefs in Christianity are just like plummeting. And I'm like, where, where are we now? <laughs> like all these, are these things you think are true? And it's just, yeah. So it just kind of became this weird place to explore different ideas and just hmm. fun. And then, um, yeah, just, I don't know, just kind of interviewing. I think the main part, though, the main thing that I was kind of using it for and still like to use it for, and probably what I enjoy about it most, is just uh, hearing different people's stories. Mm 
face and meeting new people. It's like what we're doing now, like, mm -hmm. like getting to interview you and talk to you and hear where you're from. I think that's the best stuff. Sure. Yeah, I agree. But if you look at my podcast, it is all over the place. It's just, you have those interviews and then you have other ones where it's just like, we're talking about God knows what. I don't know. It's just, Those are fun too, for sure, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. Would you say that uh, with the people that you've talked with, do you tend to see, I said a theme, but it's sort of like you, you talk to a lot of people. Is there something that you notice that is, it could be profound, but something where you're like, oh, there's like a theme, like I'm noticing when I'm having these conversations um, with people. Um, is there something like that that you've kind of noticed? in the conversations theme yeah um i'm not really sure my, my maybe my friends might be able to answer that better than i could actually <laughs> they they've told me that it it kind of has a like a vibe to it my my podcast or channel or space or whatever it is they mm -hmm. um i guess i mean i guess the theme would probably be uh yeah theology or mm. philosophy a lot of it i don't know that we get into a lot of psychology but that also mm. that bleeds in here and there i think those are those are probably half half the time it's maybe that and then the other half the time i guess the, the theme would just be uh listening to people's stories and stuff like that but i guess a lot of it is probably based more around like spirituality and stuff mm -hmm. um because it doesn't necessarily have to be it really doesn't even have to be about god too like i would love to talk to more atheist or um or i mean or i mean it doesn't even have to be about like the god of the bible even like just whatever god people are worshiping i'd love to just talk about that and dig into that mm -hmm. um but i haven't um yeah so i mean it doesn't have to be about that it usually it seems like it kind of ha always is kind of around s some sort of spiritual thing though mm -hmm. or something to do like that yeah Mm -hmm. Or different, sometimes symbolism too. Like I know I've done a few where we talked about uh, like just the, I guess the system, I don't know if symbolism is the right word, but of just like different, like the masculine and feminine, stuff like mm -hmm. that. One time we had a weird conversation about mirrors. I remember that was really mm -hmm. fun, but I don't remember what we said in it, but I just remember it was kind of fun. But <laughs> Gotta find the mirrors. Yeah, there's this cool conversation. <laughs> Yeah, they well because in Fantasies, it's weird. You're reading the Fantasies book, and then right in the middle of it, right in the middle, it's like the character of the book decides to read another book, and so you have like a little miniature story in there. So what? it's another little fairy tale right in the center of <laughs> of this other one, and it's about a magic mirror. But there's a a line somewhere in there, and it says all mirrors are magic mirrors, and I'm just like, that's such a good line, you know. So then we had this big discussion about uh, magic mirrors and just what mirrors actually are and everything, mm. but. Oof, I'm gonna have to yeah. think about that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. You get on these rabbit holes, yeah. talk to certain friends of mine, and I'm like, <laughs> where did we end up? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I know that you, uh, so I was looking and you made a book called The Almond Tree. Um, can you yeah. tell it? Is it, did that come before or after or around the same time that you did the podcast? That was, uh, yeah. So I started the podcast 2019 and then. Yeah, it was just kind of gathering uh, different people's stories. The The book was after that. I wasn't even planning on doing it. It basically, I had never, I did art in like high school or whatever. Because um, I wasn't in band or, you know, or in sports. Or I don't know what the options were. I can't remember. <laughs> but so I did art class, but I never really was super into it. Um, and then I um that year when I started doing so I started doing paintings and uh my cousin showed me how a little bit to kind of got me into it and so I was basically just kind of messing around and I just thought well I'll just try to draw different bible stories some of them just mm. were interesting ones some of them I just were ones that I have no idea what they mean they're just crazy stories like I drew one picture because there's a story in Judges where a guy cuts his concubine into 12 pieces and mails her body parts throughout all in <laughs> yeah <laughs> so like this weird really like kind of cartoon comic i don't know what you 
describe them as they're kind of cartoonish looking they're not that realistic but they're all watercolor paintings and so I was just kind of doing that and it was really kind of I think helping me with symbolism because some of them I remember doing some paintings and they were almost like uh I think three of them were based around colors because I was I was like for a short while just kind of seeing in colors um and so I think it helps with all of that and kind of helped me uh to just I guess maybe think about that stuff in a different way the different symbolism of it and so then after a while I had I think maybe I can't remember how many maybe 60 something paintings and people were like oh you should do a book you should do a book and then after a while I was like I guess I actually have enough to put them into a little book so I just did that and then um yeah it's weird because sometimes when I do stuff like that like it just I do it I finish it and then I'm almost like not ashamed of it but I don't know Mm. if it's I'm shy or something but it's just like (laughs) all right I'm done I don't want to really talk about it anymore yeah (laughs) and so it just kind of it's just sat there and I haven't I don't really promote it I was shocked when you mentioned it like I saw it in the question I was like how did she find this thing and I actually last year too I wrote uh um so there's another book out there um and this one I wrote I guess it's a short novel it's like 200 something Mm -hmm. pages I wrote it like kind of over the years just making I don't know if you'd call it a fantasy story probably but I just wrote it kind of some of it's almost like a journal and then I went back and kind of changed it into third person and stuff um and so that I I pieced that together last year stand up till four in the morning and I just like kind of grind it out grind it out and piece that put it together in order and everything um and so that one's more recent the art one I think I did I can't remember what year but it was fun. I but the weird thing too is like I mean once I was done the paintings, put them in the book. Once I basically published it on Amazon, so I just did through the Amazon self publishing, mm-hmm. um, and then I I just was like I'm gonna set all the price all the profits to zero because I just don't want to deal with taxes because I'm like I'm I'm not gonna make enough off of this to like do anything. I don't want mm-hmm. to bother with it. Um, but once I published, like I haven't. I think I painted like once since then. It just mm-hmm. really went away. Like I had this desire for an right. entire year to just paint and then it just kind of, yeah. I've even sat down and tried and it just like doesn't, either <laughs> it's just terrible or it just doesn't, like have no inspiration. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think a lot of projects, and I'm kind of the same way. There's projects that I do and I'm like, okay, I did it. Don't want to think about it again. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's nice to get something done, though. I think one oh, of the yeah. things I appreciate I appreciated about it most was like even if I like I never promote the book or anything, there was one guy I know who said that the fact that I actually did the book and sat down, and organized, and published yeah. it, it inspired him him to do his own book. Oh. So he did like a a devotional for like one day of the year or something, and now he's published a book. So just even oh. that, like even if the that's one thing that kind of encourages me. I'm like, even if the whole thing is just crap, <laughs> at least maybe it'll inspire someone to do something better. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. Cause yeah. it's a big, it's a big deal. Like putting on, yeah, like he said, it's like putting that all together and like having it for somebody to look at, like that's a big deal. Like, so yeah. Really cool. And I think for a lot of people, I think they, a lot of people would like to do stuff like that. They just yeah. think it's, it's just overwhelming because they think like, where do I start? How would mm-hmm. I ever finish this? and it's like you just start somewhere and then it'll it'll eventually (laughs) come together yeah Yeah. it'll come together I think usually quicker than you than you think Mm -hmm. so yeah it doesn't feel like it in the middle no but (laughs) yeah but then looking back you're like man how did I do all that in like two years or something yeah oh gosh Oh, well, now you're kind of inspiring me because, like, I have to, like, I have all these, like, random writings. Like, I'm like, I gotta, like, put that together. My goodness, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When, so when I was doing the the more novel, the novel mm-hmm. when I did, it's it was like that. I mean, I remember writing. I would just write on my phone just in the notes. I'd talk, oh, wow. talk to text or something. Mm-hmm. And then and then I'd had to transfer it to my computer and put it in Word or whatever. But so it's like a long process. But I remember thinking, yeah. like, I don't know what any of this is or how it's going to like it just how it's going to connect at all. Mm-hmm. It just felt like it was just all over the place. Yep. And then eventually 
eventually like just putting it in order it just eventually started to come together and then I think that was one of the hardest parts was putting it in order yeah um but once once I got it like on my computer I could just kind of read through it and I'd be like okay this applies here sometimes too it was just weird you know I'd write something and then I'd have to figure out what like I'd almost write and think oh it's, it's this character and then like later I'm like oh that's actually this other character that that would you know that, that I don't know it's just oh it was real weird learning experience through all of it but it's fun doing it yeah it is overwhelming though but just get into your writings start laying them out and then they'll they'll come together it will work <laughs> Well, <laughs> all right thank you pep just, talk i will yeah, yeah. Just, just give it time yeah i yeah that's how mine was i was like thinking in my head you know i have this beginning and i think i have this ending but everything in the middle is just uh just a hodgepodge of just, <laughs> god knows what it still feels like that i even when i read through it like because i i had to read through it like four times with all the freaking spelling errors oh right but i would get in and i'm like I'm like, where did the plot go? Like, I was starts here, and I'm just like, what? and then over somehow there, it yeah. just emerges back into the plot, and I'm like, what the heck? I don't know. But yeah, all the middle of it was just like, you're, I don't know. Yeah. You can do it. Do it. Yeah. All right. Well. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. I yes. I get on my schedule. Back on my schedule. Uh. Um. Well, cool. Do you have any um? other projects or things that you're working on uh in addition um, to your two books <laughs> yeah I know. Well, those are done so we can forget <laughs> right. about those they're, they're in the past and um, yeah um the only thing i have going on right now so um well i i mean i basically i tried to make some changes like i bought the motor home and then i, I don't know what i'm going to do in the future really um i'm not working on any art or anything right now or any uh, writing really I haven't even been writing but the one thing that I've been I guess putting more time into is I started writing music again so oh, I have cool. I also have a band I also have a band um play folk music and so yeah when I have been writing it's mostly been like putting stuff I just getting it out in, in, in forms of songs now so mm -hmm. um I've been doing that, so I I love recording music. That's probably I, I like my favorite part of it. Um, but we really gotta get some shows. You know, that's part two. So, yeah. um, are you a that, singer or do you play an instrument or? Um, I I sing, and I'm not the only singer. Here. Mm. So my friend Abram, we've we played. I mean, we've got a long history, kind of ups and downs, ins and outs, but um. There's been years where we didn't talk before too, but I've known him since high school, and we basically played music together in high school. We started a, a punk band, I think. I don't know what you describe it as in high school. And now we're in a folk group together. But he sings. He sings really, really well. Um, my two younger sisters both sing and play, um, and we released an album last year. Um, where, so okay, so how this gets, so me and Abram played a long time ago. Then we started a folk band called bear hound and we played it was me abram and our friend trent we played for a few years and that died we didn't do anything for like 10 years um i don't think abram really played music i hardly played music at all and then my youngest sister natalie she writes really the great song she's got an amazing voice and she wanted to do music so she kind of brought the band back together i guess and got Thanks. me and abram playing again and so we recorded an album and she's got songs on there so she sings Abram's got songs where he sings and I've got songs where I've written and sang too. Um, and then, uh, and so now then she moved after we recorded the album, she moved out to, um, to Bend, Oregon. So she's out in your neck of the woods, sort of, yeah. sort of, sort like of, seven yeah. hours from here. It's, yeah. It's like you get out there and it's like cities are like, like seven hour drive. What the heck? Yep. Yeah. And the East coast, it's like, yeah, there's one in the different, yeah. but yeah. But, um, yeah, so I don't, so after she moved, it's, um, I'd still love to, for her to be more involved, but um, yeah, so there's, on the album we released, it's kind of fun, because there's like a different, you know, different voice for almost, you know, it breaks it up, uh, but I, yeah, also the instrument I play, I play banjo mostly, and then mm -hmm. a little bit of harmonica, um, and sometimes I love, I enjoy playing bass, but I don't play it that often, and Natalie, my youngest sister, she played bass on the album, so. 
my other sister melissa she's amazing she's played violin since she was like four wow she sings really well too so yeah so it's cool musical family sounds like that's cool yeah yeah it's it's fun getting that opportunity to play music with them too i just <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's nice being able to connect like that so that's i guess the only thing where my attention's going i guess mm -hmm. or where I've, but as of right now we don't really have anything coming up unless we start recording again like we right yeah so i need to i need to get in gear get focused on something <laughs> I'll have to yeah. have our but Abrams, Abrams, and Abrams got some great songs though. Like I, I would just love to promote the band just for for him. Um, and and my, I mean, and my sister Natalie too. She's an amazing writer. But Abrams just he's so freaking talented, and he's just got he pours his heart and soul into those songs. Like he's he's been through a ton. Like there's one song mm. album, and I'm like he played it when he first played it for us. I was like that is the saddest song I've ever heard in my entire life. Because the first he first verse is about him losing his daughter because mm. he had him and his wife had like a series of miscarriages but the first one was the worst it was a stillbirth basically oh god so the yeah. first verse of the song is about that yeah. the second verse in the song is about him losing his dad and i'm just like oh. yeah it's just, but i'm like but it's so good uh. but it's so sad so he just yeah he i can't say enough good stuff about him he's so Aww. talented so that's so cool but, uh, well, is there um, anywhere that folks can find you and your band or your, I mean, Almond Tree, I know is on YouTube. Is there like, where, yeah. where can people go? Um, yeah, they can uh, on YouTube. Um, yeah, leave comments if you find me on there. It's always just if you want to get engaged, I'll respond if I can. I think comments are great. That's why I like YouTube a lot. I think you can leave comments on Spotify too. I'm not sure, but comments are great because you just, you get to see people get involved and um uh i've met a lot of people just through that through their yeah so that's always fun that's i guess if you like these conversations look there if my band we have our music's on spotify um it's called bear hound all one word bear mm -hmm. like the animal not naked bear <laughs> hound all one word. and then uh the new album's called if i'm honest i've been fake um so that's in there. There's also we're on Instagram too. Um, hmm. Yeah, and I think there is a YouTube. Yeah, there is a YouTube, but um, it's, it doesn't have a whole lot of traction on there yet. But uh, so those, I think that's basically it. I don't know. <laughs> I know all the things <laughs> where where everything's yeah. at. Um, yeah. Are you on? I you know Bear Hound is on. Is it on Instagram? Are you on Instagram? Or are you just mainly on Yeah, I'm on Instagram too. So yeah, mm -hmm. you can find me on Instagram if you want. It's just uh Jason's Masons. And right now the little icon is just of my muddy feet. Whereas oh. in the woods at night. So it doesn't <laughs> yeah. Um yeah. Um that's my personal one. And you can mm. reach out to me on there if you, anybody's welcome to. Uh Jason's Masons. So that's like my name, plural, and Masons with an S. Mm. So it's because a long time ago, I was well. When I had my house, I was making hot sauces with like oh. peppers and stuff. So mason jars. So that's why I did that. But I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> but um, so that's why it's what Mason's is just explanation for that. Um, gotcha. and Bearhound is on on Instagram as well. So you can mm -hmm. like follow us on there. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to post on there, but none of us really know how to do social media very I well. Know. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I get on there. I'm like, am I supposed to make this a story or a reel or a post? Uh, I'm like, I don't know which one is better to do and so on. Yeah, I don't know. I just do them and then somebody tells me I did it right or wrong. And then I figure yeah. it out from there. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, thank and you then so much. I was posting on there and then someone was like, you need to start doing hashtags. And I'm like, oh, I don't even know what, what to like, hashtag. What are you talking about? Yeah. And so I just Googled like folk band hashtags and then I copied and pasted them. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'll just say this though. If you've used um, chat GPT, oh my gosh. Like I use it for like, give me some hashtags. <laughs> like I don't really think. Yeah. Nice. Like, I've heard that's amazing. This. Yeah. It's great. I haven't, I haven't tried using it at all yet. I heard it's amazing and I heard it's also creepy sometimes. Just it's very it's creepy. So, it's so good. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yeah. 
it's kind of creepy, but I mean, I don't yeah. have to write, like I use it to write, not that we're going to get too technical, but I use it to write yeah. like a lot of my posts because I'm like, I cannot, like I work a full-time job and I'm like, I cannot think yeah. with this. I need it to do this. And then it, and then it just does. I'm like, great. I'll use that. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, you should have it. See if you can put your writing in order for your books. Oh and yeah, organize this. I bet it'll be like, yeah, here, here you go, <laughs> dummy. Like, it's like, I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> that'd be nice, but good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, well, wow, thanks, Jason. Um, is there sort of like the final thing I generally ask is like, are there is there some words of wisdom that you would like to share and leave us with today? Yeah, um, I like to address this question too. It's really, really good. Um, there's a, let's see, I don't know. I could, my favorite scripture verse, it's, mm -hmm. it's from Ecclesiastes and it's all this I've proved by wisdom. I said, I'll be wise, but it was far from me. Um, just kind of that idea of like, that's that's where true wisdom is. When you, when you actually get wise, you realize how little you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, and I love that coming from like, suppose, was the you know in the bible stories he was the wisest man that's what he's known for solomon who wrote that mm. book he's like god said you'll be the wisest man wiser than anybody that that there's ever been and then that's what he has to say about wisdom it's like it was far from me um so i've always loved that um there's a quote in one of george mcdonald's stories that i really love it's uh the loftiest hope is the surest of being fulfilled you know really like that quote that's oh, helped that's me great. a lot yeah. yeah it's just really comforting mm -hmm. yeah so that's that's probably probably what it i guess i mean i'm sure there's a bunch of other ones oh there's, i'm sure <laughs> there's some there's some great quotes there's a i don't know there's one from what's that one there's one hebrew one from i think it's from it's a hillel and it says uh if i'm if i'm not for me who will be for me and if i'm mm. only for me what am I? And if not now, then when? I love that quote too. It's oh so man, good. that's so yeah. many good layers on that. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. yeah. Like, gotta love me. It's not all about me. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. that's super good. I love that's it. It's really good. Yeah, that's a great question. I love that you asked that too. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like have you been um, asked that question? Um, gosh, I don't know. I maybe. <laughs> Can I ask you that now? Sure, you where's can ask me. Yeah. Where's, where's yeah. the oh goodness, yeah. now I'm in in the in the reverse position. Let's think. In the hot seat. <laughs> the hot seat. What well, you, I you got, to gotta do it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, I'll be on um on the almond tree tomorrow. I'm very much looking forward to that. We'll talk about Metatron. It'll be cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, now that I'm thinking about it, so um not to get into like all of the angelic connections or whatever, but um, sort of my meditations with on with like with angels and sort of the messages they send. Um, mainly I've asked like, what is, what is my, or what is the purpose? Like, what is the, why are we here? What are we doing? <laughs> and the one and the yeah. four letters, K N O W, no, K N O W, just no. And then I'm like, okay, just no. So I, I I know that's not like a complete like words of wisdom and super inspiring, but for me it's like, you know, it, it kind of takes a lot of the emotion out of certain things that happen in life, right? Maybe I'm just here to know, like the mistakes I made, they're just for me to know. The beautiful things I've oh, wow. done is for me to know. Yeah. And it doesn't really does it matter for anybody else? I don't know. It's just for me to know. And so that's um, really cool. Yeah, so that's kind of like the, the simple four letters, K N O W. Yeah. And so I think about that quite often. So yeah. That's really cool. Hey, yeah. yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I'm yeah. Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much, Jason. I'm super looking forward to being on Online Tree tomorrow. And yeah, thanks for being here. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Your support means the world to us. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment to like, comment, and share it with others who might find this content valuable. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more enlightening discussions. Your engagement helps us grow, and we appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for being a part of the Casual Temple community.